Hi there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. In the months leading up to the final battle of Jakku and the complete destruction of the Empire, the roles of the Rebels and Imperials flipped. The rank-and-file Imperials deserted bases and ships while only the most hardened and extreme Imperials remained fighting against the Rebellion. In those last remaining months, the once glorious Empire was reduced to a scattered insurgency and small groups of fanatics fighting against the newly arisen Galactic Order, the New Republic. Today, we're going to look at the various pro-Imperial groups that remain fighting even as the central leadership of the Empire collapsed or surrendered. The one thing that a lot of people failed to understand about the Empire was that it was actually pretty fragile, especially when the linchpin was removed from power. This is mostly because rulers in these types of positions care very little what happens to their government after they die, unless maybe they're trying to pass power to a kin. This is the exact opposite of a Western democracy, which has clear lines of secession should Gerald Butler not be able to protect the head of state. Now, officially speaking, beneath the emperor, you have the Imperial Ruling Council. This was made up of bureaucrats like Masamita and State Pastage, but they were more seen as yes-men for the emperor. In reality, they ran the empire in its extremely complicated bureaucracy, but they actually had very little power other than the authority given to them by the emperor. While most of the empire didn't know that the emperor was a crazy, powerful space wizard, they did worship him as almost a savior of the galaxy. He had a pretty impressive propaganda machine built up, and certain portions of the military, like the Stormtrooper Corps, were extremely loyal to him. But once he was gone, all of the real power went to two locations. One was a variety of military leaders, and two, the 20 Sector Moths. With the death of the Empire, a massive communications blackout spreading from Endor cut off contact for most of the Imperial military. In the days following the Imperial defeat, panic set in as most of the Imperial ruling council and high-ranking leaders realized that without Palpatine, no one knew who exactly was in charge. In the following months, this confusion only grew as military leaders were left without any orders. Some continued following previous directives, while others took matters in their own hands and used their resources to establish themselves as warlords. The 20 Sector Moths, however, realized that they actually held most of the power now in the galaxy. Each Sector Moth controlled numerous planets and systems, along with fleets and Imperial garrisons. And so, many Moths quickly gathered power and allies as they maneuvered against other Moths. Chaos was quickly brewing in the Empire, and this was more or less Palpatine's plan, or lack of plan. You see, he believed that if the Empire was unable to protect them, then they did not deserve to continue existing. And so he designed the Empire to fall into factionalism, and then complete destruction within months after his death. And his true plan, known as the Contingency Plan, was being carried out by Gallius Rax, his protege, and a part of that plan was speeding up the destruction of the Imperial forces remaining. The second part of the Contingency Plan had Gallius Rax taking a small group of the most capable and loyal Imperials to the Unknown Region where they could rebuild the Empire and, I'm guessing, revive the Emperor somehow. Although that much is not confirmed yet. Anyway, back to the Empire. As the Moffs and the various military leaders started splintering into smaller and smaller factions, communication kind of just fell apart between all these Imperial forces and fanaticism and extremism continued rising, whereas moderate Imperials started defecting or just surrendering. Although the Empire had always been known for its cruelty, at least it used to be organized. Now there were armed bands of Imperials just running around the galaxy, raiding areas, and causing a lot of chaos. On Coruscant, the news of the Emperor's death led to mass celebrations in the streets, which turned into deadly riots when local Coruscant police began opening fire on the revelers. Masamita, the de facto leader of the Empire for now, barricaded himself in the government district, and the Imperial Security Bureau took over all Imperial civil and military forces on the planet and fortified the federal district. Gellis Rax refused to send any reinforcements. The late Emperor had wanted Coruscant to fall as a symbol of the old Empire. And so soon, civil war erupted on the planet. The ISB started creating death squads, which utilized speeders to hunt down and indiscriminately kill Coruscant civilians. Meanwhile, the Imperial Future Council was being held on the world of Akiva. It would be one of the last remaining efforts by the Empire to gather all of its leaders and form some kind of coalition, but ultimately that meeting would fail as New Republic forces arrived and started invading the planet. One of the Imperial advisors who survived the events on Akiva was Yupe Tasu. Yupe had been one of the Emperor's closest confidants and was obsessed with the Sith and Dark Side, although he had no Force sensitivity. 
After the death of Darth Vader, Yubei was inspired to create an organization known as the Acolytes of the Beyond, which was basically a dark side militant cult. Their activities involved searching for Sith artifacts, mainly lightsabers, and carrying out all types of terrorist attacks against Republic institutions and security forces. They even attempted to start a popular revolution in Cornet City on Corellia. Meanwhile, the Emperor's Sentinels were carrying out Operation Cinder, which was a part of the Contingency Plan. Operation Cinder directed specially selected Imperial officers to use weather satellites to destroy dozens of populated Imperial worlds. The Emperor's selection of worlds was pretty indiscriminate. One of the targets was his own homeworld of Naboo, and another target was an extremely loyal Imperial world called Vardos. Carried out by small groups of highly loyal Imperials, these actions caused many Imperials to turn against the Empire. While Gallius Rax continue gathering more Imperial forces for one final showdown against the New Republic, all across the galaxy, small groups of Imperials started operating independently now that they were removed from the central authority that once ruled over them. While some of these Imperials would surrender to the New Republic and even turned over important war material like Super Star Destroyers, other Imperial factions doubled down and became a lot more violent and a lot more extreme. In the uh, Note Sector, which was home to planets like Bespin and Hoth, the local Imperial Governor, Ubrick Aldohard, tried to maintain his legitimacy by blacking out all communications and killed anyone who claimed that the Emperor was dead by using his specialized purge troopers. With his remaining forces, he created what was known as the Iron Blockade over the system, which prevented all trade and basic goods from reaching the area. The New Republic was eventually able to overwhelm the blockade with the help of smugglers and civilian forces, but the last remnant held out on Bespin's Cloud City, which had been occupied by Imperials after Lando Calrissian turned against Darth Vader. These Imperial holdouts fought with extreme ferocity, and like a lot of holdout units, were mainly made up of stormtroopers. Despite still having a pretty large advantage over the New Republic Navy, the Empire began expending more munitions than they could produce, which eventually led to a series of major defeats. Soon, desperate commanders with only raw recruits straight from flight academies started using their TIE fighters as suicide bombers. With the loss of major shipyards like Quat and Turco Prime, it was doubtful that the Empire would ever be able to replace these massive losses. On Kaishik, what had originally been a center for enslaving Wookiee laborers was now the personal kingdom of warlord Moff Tolruk. He was using inhibitor chips to make sure that the local Wookiee population was docile and also selling Wookiees on the side for his own personal gain. But a privately led rebellion by Han Solo and a group of mercenaries quickly turned the tables on the Imperials, who were then forced to escape into the jungle and mount their own insurgency. During the liberation of Kaishik, New Republic forces managed to break open an Imperial prison and recover several rebel prisoners. Unbeknownst to the New Republic, these were actually dangerous sleeper cell assassins. During the celebration of Liberation Day on Chandrilla, the freed rebel prisoners were presented before an audience of high-level officials. They were activated via inhibitor chips in their brains and killed several innocent civilians and Republic leaders. Mon Motha, however, survived this assassination attempt. The New Republic had no choice but to retaliate and launch an attack against the remaining Imperial forces which had now been gathering on Jakku for months. These Imperial units, however, were far from their prime, cut off from their normal logistical support, and plagued by low morale. Many of these units had gone completely tribal and there was a complete breakdown in discipline. A lot of the stormtroopers ended up painting their helmets and also modifying their weapons into very vicious looking melee weapons. Facing a much better equipped and larger New Republic ground force, Imperial ground forces adopted insurgent tactics and relied on costly suicide attacks and ambushes. And so as order fell apart and the Galactic Empire remnant forces found themselves outnumbered, they adopted strategies not all that different from the ones used by Imperial Japan during World War II. Republic forces had to win hard-fought battles of attrition against usually stormtrooper units who were desperate to cause as much damage as possible before they were destroyed. Imperial fanatics and terrorists also targeted depots used by the Republic to sort through Imperial prisoners. Not only did the extremists see these Imperials as traitors, they also wanted to discourage more mass surrenders by Imperial forces. The signing of the Galactic Concordance Treaty finally marked the official end of all combat for the Galactic Civil War, and lenient post-war policies championed by Mon Mothma and the New Republic government helped cut down the number of insurgency attacks by Imperial remnant forces. And ultimately, a galaxy tired of constant warfare settled into an uneasy peace.
So there you have it guys, the Empire goes from a mighty, gigantic military force to basically what the Rebellion was at the beginning of the war. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.